G'day guys, Will here and welcome back to our video series on building a budget racing simulator cockpit. So, what we're going to be doing in this video is checking out the Next Level Racing Challenger cockpit, which is brand new, new to the market, and costs significantly less than a lot of other all-in-one cockpit setups that are available today. So, if you guys are aware, the cockpit that I'm using every day at the moment is a Next Level Racing GT Track cockpit, which costs around double what this costs. It's about $1,000 Australian. Now, this one is $499.90 Australian delivered, or $349 US dollars. So, around half the price of what I run in my daily driver setup. Now it also obviously doesn't have the motion, doesn't have the butt kicker and a lot of the other things that I'm used to running day to day. So when I say a budget build, what I'm basically saying is, you know, the sort of thing that you might be looking to step up to from something like a Logitech G29 or a G920 or, you know, a Thrustmaster system or something like that. What we're trying to achieve here is deciding whether you really do need to spend the money on, you know, really expensive stuff like, you know, the Club Sport wheelbase or direct drive wheelbases, things like that, expensive cockpits or whether something like this gets the job done. So I just wanted to clarify that before we start. So what we'll be doing in today's video is assembling the Next Level Racing Challenger cockpit, seeing how it all goes together, having a quick look at how it stands in terms of rigidity, flexibility, scope of adjustment and things like that. All the things that you guys are going to need to know before you make a purchasing decision. We'll also get our CSL Elite gear installed from Fnatic and then the next video after this we'll get it all fired up on the PC, start playing some games and see whether this is something that is worth the money. So let's get stuck into it. So everything is out of the box. It was all very well packaged. Again, I'm always impressed by Next Level Racing's ability to fit as much as possible into as small a box as possible. It's why the boxes weigh so much because there's just so much stuff in them. But the first thing that strikes me is the quality of the stuff that we have in front of us is exactly the same as what we have with the FGT that I built previously as well as my GT track as well. So. Because it's cheaper, it doesn't mean that they've compromised on the quality of the manufacturing. All the stitching and everything on the seat's really good. We'll take a look at that in more detail soon. But it's all made of the same steel construction with the same quality welds. You know, all the nut certs are all well made and, you know, nice and solid. There's plenty of adjustability and everything like that. And there's no compromises been made in terms of the actual manufacturing quality. So don't think that because it's a cheaper product, you're getting a lower quality material or anything like that. The cost saving is in, obviously, there's less of it. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit less rigidity and things like that as well. So let's quickly run through exactly what we have here. We've got the upright here, which is the part that's actually going to go up onto the wheel. So this kind of is going to sit in front of your legs. And then you've got an upright here. This telescopic arm is going to slide into it that way around. And then we've got a wheel plate, which is here. And that is going to sit up on top of here. I'm not sure which way around it goes, either that way or that way, probably this way. Yeah, it'll be this way. And then you've got a little adjustment there on the side that you can see. And we'll obviously look at that in more detail later on. We've also got our pedal plate, which is exactly the same pedal plate that you get with the FGT and the GT track. So obviously no compromises there. And again, that's a solid piece of steel that's been powder coated black. So we'll set that down as well. Then we've got our various other bits and pieces, the side rails here. You can see again, there's a lot of adjustment there. I believe that this supports sizes up to six foot nine. So if you're six foot nine, you can still use this. Don't know too many people that are six foot nine. So definitely nice and usable for tall people as well but we'll check all that out later on so we've got our uh, mounting plate here for our shifter as well we're not going to be putting a shifter on this particular build but it does come with it and it looks like it sort of just bolts straight onto the side like that uh, we've got our front plate here with a sticker on it as well we've got some little um, some little feet like little metal feet. Now I do understand also that this is compatible with the optional caster wheels as well. It doesn't come with them, but you can install them if you want to. So that's cool as well if you need to move it around. Uh, we've got our little side adjustments here for the seat. So those are cool. Not sure exactly what that is yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out during the build. We've got our adjustable seat rails as well. So just like in a car, you pull on the lever and it allows you to ratchet the seat forward and back. All the gear that you need to install it is all included as we've come to expect from Next Level Racing. So we've got two packages here. 
one for the back half and one for the front half. Now just be aware that the bolts do have sort of like an oily residue on them, so be very careful. I'm probably gonna end up putting a sheet or something like that over my nice new table before I actually start putting this together. But just be aware that they do have this oily residue. So you just wanna be careful if you're putting this together on carpet or anything like that in your mum's living room. You, um, you definitely don't wanna be leaving oily marks on anybody's carpet. So just keep that in mind. Now the seat itself, I think this is the part that probably impresses me the most, just because I think for the money I wasn't expecting Expecting this sort of quality when you when you look at you know the cost of actually buying a racing seat on its own if you go down to somewhere like Best Buy or super cheap auto if you're in Australia and look at you know relatively cheap racing seats there's still sort of five or six hundred bucks which is more than what this whole cockpit costs and the quality you know is probably not as good as what this is this is really really nice and you know nice fabric that's gonna breathe really nicely lots of padding there as well now one thing that I noticed that it doesn't come with the lumbar support cushion which has come with the FGT and the GT track previously so that's one little cost saving there but this looks like it's gonna have plenty of padding in it anyway and definitely the construction all looks good the nice double seams on there as well we've got the nice little Challenger embroidered logo there as well as the next level racing logo on the front but obviously we'll f we'll comment on the comfort and everything of the seat a little bit later on once we've got everything together now you also get a couple of stickers here as well from next level racing which is cool uh, we've got our little assembly manual as well which we'll obviously be using in a lot more detail in just a moment but again if you can follow your ikea instructions you'll be able to follow this absolutely no trouble whatsoever very simple to put together everything's clearly marked and of course on the last page as well You've got a assembly video from Next Level Racing. Watch mine, don't watch theirs. <laughs> no, watch theirs, theirs is good too. Um, and yeah, obviously they've got their support email address there as well. And I do find, I've got to say, Next Level Racing support is second to none. Every single time I've had any questions or anything like that, I've always been able to get in touch with them. They've been incredibly helpful. And I think that's, that's definitely one thing that sets them apart from a lot of other businesses is they're just so easy to deal with in that regard. Now they also included a nice little gift as well. There was a little card here that said, a Next Level Racing gift. Thank you for your support and welcome to the Next Level Racing team. Share your new gear using the hashtag Team NLR. Any support needed, email us at support at Next Level Racing and enjoy your products. There's also a brand new community forum that they've started up as well. I've been talking to the CEO of Next Level Racing a little bit recently and that's something that they're really wanting to push to help you guys out. So um, jump into nextlevelracing.com slash forums to check that out. And then they also included this nice little lanyard as well, which I'm definitely going to be using because the one that I've got on my keys at the moment is nearly dead. But uh, anyway, other than that, we've got some little retention clips here. I believe these are for cable management. And then we've got the little side screws here as well for our adjustment plates and that is pretty much everything that's included So let's get stuck into putting this thing together All right, so we've got all the bits in front of us for the first part of the assembly here now I lied you do actually need a pair of scissors They don't include absolutely everything that you'll need to put this together But uh, yeah, you do need a pair of scissors to open up the little toolkit here. So there's two separate toolkits as you saw before. This one's marked as back half. This one's for the front half. So we can set that one aside for now. We're not going to be using it. And as I mentioned before, just be careful that you don't get the oily crap all over your mum's carpet. But um, otherwise, it should be nice and straightforward. Okay, so we've got our tablecloth down now to protect the nice white table from the oily residue on the bolt. You can see my fingers are already getting orange just from sort of touching them. So anyway, let's get to work assembly. So we've got the bits we need for the first part. So we've got the larger cutout on this side, which is going to be the one that we'll put the bolt through, and then the smaller one on this side. So we're basically just attaching the side rails like this. So just important to note that one is marked as left and one is marked as right. So I'm assuming that must be important. It doesn't look like there's any difference from side to side, but I wouldn't imagine they put the stickers on there if it wasn't important somehow. So just take note of that. We'll grab a 15 mil M8 bolt as well as a washer. Now anytime we install a bolt, we always install a washer as well, unless otherwise marked. And we want to grab our Allen key as well. And it's a little bit tricky, I would imagine, to get this through. So we just want to drop it in without um, sort of losing it inside, just like that. And then this side has got a thread already cut, so it basically just bolts straight into the thread. There we go. Now one tip I've always found when assembling Next Level Racing stuff is it's a good idea to leave everything loose to begin with and then tighten everything down as you sort of finish each section. That way uh, it can be it can be a little bit difficult sometimes, like for example, putting the pedal plate in here might be a little bit tricky when we've already tightened these down. It just gives us a little bit of movement so we can move things around and jiggle them into position 
before we bolt everything down. So let's install this one now as well. And then we want our back plate here, so we'll put that in. And that uses two 60 mil bolts on either side, so four bolts in total. And again, we wanna make sure we put washers on as well. So four washers. So onto the pedal plate mount now. So this is gonna go in here. Now the instructions show it sort of being in between the two sides here. Obviously the positioning will depend on how long your legs are. We're gonna start here and then we can make any adjustments later on if we need to. So 60 mil bolts again, I think it is. Yeah, so four M8, 60 mil. Uh, again, washers on each one. And then we put a nut on the opposing side as well. So it goes through like that. And then the nut goes on the inside. So now we have a little decision to make. We've got four adjustment holes here depending on the pitch that you want the pedal plate to sit at. I'm gonna have it on the tallest angle to begin with. We can always adjust it down later on if we need to, but with pedals that we're gonna be installing the CSL Elites aren't inverted, so they are gonna sort of sit upright this way. So we're gonna put those bolts through this way. So now we're at the point where we can tighten everything down. So we've got everything sort of installed. There's nothing else that needs to slide through the middle so we can get everything nice and tight. So we'll start off with the sides here. So now the pedal plate. So it goes on this way up. And again, you've got a whole bunch of adjustment here depending on how high you want the pedals. We're gonna start off with them relatively high up, about there I think and we can again adjust it as we need to later on. So what we got here, we got M8 15 mil bolts. So that's these ones again. Now I'm not gonna tighten these down just yet because I may end up having to take this off again to put my pedals on later on. I know the CSL Elites are a little bit difficult to get in behind. So we're gonna leave that loose for now. I'll just tighten it a little bit so it's not flapping around, but that's just to give you an idea of how it installs. So now it's time to move on to the mounting plate and arm for the steering wheel. So that goes into here, like that. And this time we wanna use our twist knobs, so we have full adjustment. So we'll unpackage those quickly. So moving on now to the mount for the wheel itself. Again, we've got four adjustment holes here, and you can see there's three different holes on the plate here. So it installs there, and then you can adjust the pitch based on your preference. So we'll start off in just a flat position and then we can adjust it later on as we need to. So again, we want 60 mil bolts, a washer for each and a nut for each. And again, I'm gonna leave those loose for now. We will tighten it up once we've got it in its final position. So just to give you a quick idea, look at my fingers there. They look like I've been smoking a pack a day for the last 30 years. So I've never smoked a cigarette in my life, but yeah, they're absolutely disgusting. So that's what I was saying about the grease on the bolts and why I don't want to be doing this on carpet or um, on my white table or anything. But anyway, we're gonna be moving on towards the back of the rig now. So we'll move it across to this side, across the table, and we're gonna be building back towards the chair, starting with the side rails here. So let's just quickly organize ourselves. So this is actually quite a clever design here. We've got a bolt that goes in through the top into a nut set, and then we've also got a second bolt that's gonna go through as well in the holes provided here. So one's gonna go on here like that. Move this out of the way. And the other is gonna sit on this side. And then we use a 15 mil bolt through the top and a 60 mil bolt through the insides here. And that's gonna make sure that it's in good alignment here because the top hole sort of aligns it that way and the bottom hole aligns it that way. That was actually one issue that I had with the FGT when I put it together. It was very difficult with the way these side rails mounted to get them sort of sitting at exactly the right angle and not twisted. So this is actually quite a good little design improvement here, I think. So it'd be good to see whether they implement something like this in future generations of the FGT cockpit as well. But uh, let's start off with our 15 mils again with a couple of washers. Now this is the point where you're gonna run out of bolts in the first packet. So we wanna open up the second packet. Don't forget that you have it. So we grab a 60 mil. And 
and then the back panel as well. So that slides in here. So time to put the seat together now. So we want to start by installing the side brackets. They're going to kind of go on like that on either side and then the back piece will go in place. So the bolts are actually pre-installed in the chair. So what you want to do is just take them out. And we'll start off by installing them on the side. And then we need to do exactly the same thing on the sides of the back piece. So loosen the screws once more. So one little thing to note here, you only want to install the top two bolts, leave the bottom two positions vacant. What you want to do is place it on the brackets here now the mounting plate goes on the outer side on either side. So the top position here is going to be where it pivots and the bottom position is going to be where the screw goes in. So I probably actually did these up a little bit tight to begin with. I might back those off just a little bit just to give me a little bit more flexibility here while we're installing the side pieces. So once all of these bolts are installed, you can see we've got three holes here each that has an adjustment position. So it actually gives us a huge range of adjustability here because you can see as you go through, the different holes will line up in different positions. So we're gonna start off here, I think. And we can always adjust it from there if we're not happy with the position later on. And now we just need to tighten all the other bolts up again. And that is the seat done. So time to move on to our seat rails now. So these have actually got a couple of stickers on them so you don't get anything wrong says this attaches to the seat using the black bolts which are actually in the bottom of the seat by default and then this side says this attaches to the frame make sure the square end on the black bolt is rotated to lock into place when pushed down so on the end of each bolt there's a little sort of nut that goes through and you can see there it's kind of just sits in position and i just dropped it so this little bolt basically sits through the rail and then it rotates and it locks in position with a little captive sort of square there so i'm going to take the nuts off on both sides Drop the rail into position through here. And then tighten it back up, making absolutely sure that those little locking pins are in position. So again, we want to leave them a little bit loose so that we can move them around and get the seat into position later on. And then we'll tighten it down once everything is in place. So we want to remove the bolts from the bottom of the seat. Drop the seat into position. Now this is probably going to be a little bit awkward to do on camera properly but we wanna move the rails and then get the bolts in from underneath. So just so you can see exactly what you need to do here, you wanna slide the rails forward so you can access underneath to begin with. So pull the lever up, slide it forward on both sides. And then once the front bolts are in, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing again, except this time push it back so you can get the bolt in from the back side. So it shouldn't be too difficult to do, but it's gonna be a little bit awkward to try and do on camera. Okay, so we've managed to contort ourselves around and get the first bolt in, which is the most difficult one. So we'll get that, we won't tighten that up just yet. We'll go around and do the other side, and then we'll come back, tighten up the front ones, and then we'll go and do the rear ones afterwards. All right, so now we wanna slide the rails back. Again, I haven't tightened these fully yet, because I'm guessing that we might need to do a little bit of sort of adjustment on the back before we tighten everything down. So we need to slide it back so we can access the rear bolts, tighten those down, then slide it back forward again, and tighten the front one. So we'll slide the rail back now, push the seat all the way back as far as it can go, and then put the rear bolts in position. All right, so I'm not gonna lie to you, that was hard work getting that on there. Very difficult to sort of line things up. Just sort of leave everything loose, like I said, and um, yeah, you can kind of move things around and get everything aligned without too much difficulty, but it is a tedious task. But what we want to do now is tighten up these bolts that secure the rails in position, making sure that our seat is nice and square, obviously, before we tighten it down. Okay, so the only thing that's left now is the shifter plate. So we're not actually going to install it right now because I don't have a shifter to install on this rig, but I will just quickly show you how it works. So you've got a little bracket here, which mounts on the side, and you've got this one here as well with some nut certs on it. So basically that mounts on there like that, that mounts on there like that, 
and it will sit basically there and you can adjust it forward and back to be wherever you want. So we'll set that aside for now because we're not using it. Now there is one other thing that we need to do which is install our support rods for our pedal plate to give it a little bit of added rigidity. But I'm not going to do that until after the Elite pedals are installed. Just because I'm expecting I probably will actually need to take this off to install the pedals. So that is the assembly and yeah look I mean it's pretty straightforward. The hardest part by far was getting the um, was getting the seat onto the brackets. Uh, there is one more thing we need to do as well I just realized is install the casters that go on the bottom as well. Probably would have been smart to have installed them at the very beginning. It's actually the last thing that's in the instructions but you probably want to do that first. But anyway we'll tip it over on its side, we'll get those installed, get all of our CSL Elite gear installed and then we can start testing it out. Hit the current, made my bed in the whirlpool, spiraling down, trapped in the circle, drowning in front of my eyes like it was virtual. No control, arms flapping as I hurt it into the unknown, tied on the weights, unconsciously sealing my own fate. No resistance or game being played. I chose the life of a castaway. Okay, so it is possible to install it this way, but it's gonna be a real pain. Uh, it's a real shame that Fnatic don't give you a way to remove this top plate or at least a hole in the top so you can kind of get in through there. So what we'll do is we'll remove the pedal plate again, just the four bolts that we only did up loosely to begin with, and that will allow easy access in to finish the job. Okay, so there's one more step involved which I mentioned at the very start when we were first installing the pedal plate before the pedals were installed, and that is these long bolts which go through to stop the pedal plate from flexing. So you can see, without these, there is a little bit of flex there by default, and that's kind of just because of the amount of leverage that you have when you're pushing on the pedals up here. The throttle's fine, the brakes, you know, a little bit of flex there. So what you want to do here is put the nut onto the bolt here. So spin it all the way up to the top, and then it goes through. And you need to put another nut underneath it as well. So it just goes here. And then basically you're screwing the whole thing down into the nut cert, which sits down on the bottom part here. So it screws in. and screws down into the nuts of it. And once it's screwed all the way down, screw it pretty tight so it's putting a little bit of tension on the plate itself. And then we screw up the bottom nut here. And that pretty much just locks it into place so it can't push it down at all. So it's quite a clever little system, very simple but it definitely gets the job done. Now I've got exactly the same system on my um, GT track and it does work really well. So now we just need to do exactly the same thing on the other side as well. And that is the assembly complete. So pushing on that as hard as I possibly can now. <laughs> and there's only, the only flex that you have at all is just the flex in the plate itself between the two sides, which will obviously be reduced once we have the middle pedal in as well. So pushing on the brake pedal, absolutely no flex whatsoever. The only wiggle you see there is just the table moving. We'll get this down on the ground in a minute so you can see properly. But uh, yeah, that has definitely eliminated the flex that we saw there before. So let's get our cabling and our cable management installed, get it down on the ground and have a closer look. So game being played, I chose the life of a cast away. No resistance, I give up. Okay, so time to have a quick look over this thing. Now, first impressions, I think it is a very solid construction here. There's no issues with flex side to side or anything like that. The pedal plate is also very, very solid with those additions of the support bars there, no flex at all. Now, obviously I am using just the spongy insert on the default CSL Elite pedals at the moment, and that may change once we install the load cell, but honestly, I don't think it will. It's the same It's the same exact design as what I have in my GT track, and I haven't had any problems with flex at all there. Uh, one little thing that I do wanna note here is the seat back. I don't know whether it's the way I've got it installed. Maybe it's my mistake, but I have fiddled around with it and tried to tighten the bolts and everything. It does have quite a bit of movement forward, as you can see there. Uh, it's not a problem when you're using it though, so don't be put off by that. When you lean back in the seat, you can see here, if I push against it, very, very, very little movement at all. In fact, I actually think it's got a little bit less movement in it than the, um, than the FGT did that I had previously, which is quite a good thing. Uh, but yeah, it does have that little bit of flex forward. Obviously when you're driving that is not a problem whatsoever, but just something that you might notice, so I thought I'd just draw attention to it. Now the wheel platform itself, there is quite a bit of flex there, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, the flex is generated basically just by the single bar, so it's just flex in the bar itself. Um, I did have to tighten the bolts on the sides here down really, really tightly to stop it from flexing within here. 
Uh, obviously, this is just a limitation of the design, and it's about what I expected, to be honest. It'll be really interesting once we actually start driving to see whether it's something that sort of detracts from the driving experience at all. But obviously, that is the primary difference between this cockpit and the FGT. If you take away the ability to switch between GT and formula-style seating position with the FGT, the only other real difference between this and that cockpit is the design here, with obviously the platform being a lot more sturdy in the FGT. But then again, also remember that the FGT is, you know, a third of the price. Again, it's it's two hundred dollars more than this is. So I think, you know, considering the price point at four ninety nine Australian dollars, this is very good quality. And yeah, as as I said, you know, obviously it's more flex than I'm used to in my GT track and with the FGT. But uh, once we actually start driving, we'll be able to test that out a little bit more and see whether it's something that sort of takes away from the driving experience. Obviously, I wouldn't be using a expensive wheelbase on this though. Definitely not um, something that would handle a direct drive wheel, but that is not the market that it's aimed at. So I wanna make sure I'm being fair to it here. Now, the only other thing that I will mention quickly as well is the cable management clips that they include really aren't very good. I mean, they get the job done but um, Velcro straps work a lot better than these do. I mean, that's really just nitpicking, but I wanna make sure that I mention all of those little things, good and bad, in this review. So in terms of adjustability, let's just have a quick look at that here now. So we'll loosen this off first, and you'll see, drop all the way down here. I mean, nobody's gonna be that short, really, unless you're a kid, but um, it also goes all the way up to here as well, and even higher. If we take this out, we can actually go all the way up to about here without any problems. So massive scope of adjustability there in terms of height. So pedal wise, as you saw before, we can go up to about this sort of angle here and pretty much completely flat as well. We can also slide it forward and back. So we can go about two inches further forward than I've got it now and all the way back to all the way back here. So like six inches almost further back towards me. So a huge range of adjustability there. And also with the seat as well, I've got it pretty far back here, but it can go all the way forward to here. So, I mean, obviously I can't get my legs in now, but uh, I can imagine that somebody that was only about maybe like four foot tall could probably still use this. So if you've got young kids that are wanting their first rig or something like that, then I would definitely say that this is a suitable option there as well. But look guys, I think that's pretty much all that I can say without plugging it all into the computer and actually testing it out properly. And I don't want to make this video too long. It's already been a pretty long video with the assembly. So we'll leave it at that for this one. But guys, thank you very much for watching the video. If you do want to pick one of these up or any of the Fnatic gear that you've seen in the video, the links are in the description below. A small percentage of the profits from the Fnatic sales do come back to me to help out with the channel. And I also have a Next Level Racing 10% discount code in the description below for you as well. So make sure you check that out before you buy one of these. And yeah, guys, I think I'll leave it at that for this video. So if you've enjoyed it, please do hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you don't miss the next one. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.